very warm welcome to Obi and Horn of Africa. This is Future Africa Spotlight. Today, I am going to discuss with a political analyst who based in U.S., Ajamu Baraka. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. The U.S. government is uh, warmongering upon Ethiopia these days. What is the secret behind? Well, actually, there is really no secret. Uh, the U.S. has been quite clear about its intentions, not only in Africa, but really uh, throughout the world. And their intentions um, is very simple. They want to maintain global hegemony. Their uh, policies are being informed by the uh, bipartisan commitment to the doctrine of full spectrum dominance. Full spectrum dominance is the idea that the U.S. would be globally hegemonic and that in every region, any particular state that builds the uh, potential power to challenge U.S. interests in a particular region, be it Africa or Latin America or even Asia, those states will be undermined in order to make sure that they never pose a threat to U.S. hegemony. So in the case of Africa, we, we pose a very simple question to our friends in the U.S. What is the most dynamic and right now fastest growing economy on the African continent? And the answer, of course, is Ethiopia. And we say, what was the most prosperous nation on the African continent just a few years ago uh, in 20, uh, 2011? And the answer is Libya. Well, what happened to Libya? Libya was targeted and basically destroyed. What is happening today? Ethiopia is targeted and there are attempts to try to undermine its uh, national so sovereignty and to balkanize the nation. Who benefits from that? What interests benefit from that? Well, it's quite obvious. So what we see in the US is a, a sophisticated orchestrated attempt to uh, garner uh, public support uh, for the uh, policies and objectives of the U.S. on the African continent, with Ethiopia now currently in the crosshairs of U.S. destabilization efforts. This global media, uh, majorly CNN, Reuters, Associated Press, and others, uh, are really busy with disseminating false uh, narratives. Recently, you tweeted and posted about hybrid war against Ethiopia, about manipulating the incumbent government, misinformation, about uh, news fabrication and false propaganda and deceiving the incumbent leader in Ethiopia. What do you mean by? Well, you know, um, hybrid war, war is the methodology used by, uh, by global imperialism today. It is a multi-dimensional effort to undermine the sovereignty of, of states that they have targeted. A central component of this hybrid war is the information uh, war, the struggle around perceptions and the construction of perceptions. And so what we see with Ethiopia is that there is the uh, creating the perception uh, that the state is unstable, uh, that um, the uh, uh, war that is taking place um, in the northern part of the country that was initiated uh, not by the Ethiopian government, but by a regional uh, uh, entity uh, is in fact, the responsibility of, of the Ethiopian government. And so they are galvanizing a public opinion to support uh, their, their objectives in that country. So this is part of the informational war uh, that the uh, private corporations that are supposed to be independent are in complete alignment with the political objectives of the US state. And people have to understand that this uh, perception construction, this creation of certain kinds of narratives uh, to justify uh, imperialist penetration is a major element 
of the of the new forms of warfare uh, that we see uh, the Europeans and the U.S. engaged in. You've said uh, the U.S. government is busy in intervening in that of Ethiopian politics for the sake of global hegemony. Uh, is that the way how the U.S. government attain its hegemony? Uh, is that advisable, like terrorizing a nation at the same time getting your own hegemony, or it's better to be uh, a lie of this nation and working together for common interest? Well, I think that U.S. policymakers uh, make a determination from their point of view uh, what method um, is most effective in, in advancing their interests. Uh, there is a, a internal policy debate, if you will, among uh, the foreign policy community around whether or not the, uh, the militarized approach uh, to trying to maintain U.S. hegemony in Africa is really the best approach. There are some that say, say, say that is important instead of using uh, a military first, uh, a destabilization first strategy, that instead uh, the U.S. should uh, cultivate better ties uh, with nation states that where there may be common interests, um, provide the kind of, of economic support and political support necessary uh, in order to keep those states on their side. We have to remember the main objective or the main challenger uh, to uh, U.S. hegemony on the African continent, as it is seen by uh, U.S. policymakers, is in fact the, the Chinese. So, you know, the, the question then becomes, what is the best way to try to counter the influence of China? And some in the foreign policy community are, uh, 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 have banked on or invested in the idea that uh, destabilization uh, that allows for uh, U.S. Uh, military uh, interventions, uh, uh, military agreements between the U.S. and various states is the route to go, the best way to try to counter uh, Chinese influence. So this is a, a, a growing debate within the uh, foreign policy community, uh, and the effectiveness of it remains to be seen. From our point of view, we believe that it's been a very ineffective that a, a state, for example, like Ethiopia, uh, that um, uh, could have been a, uh, a state uh, that would have been a uh, stable, uh, uh, not so much partner, but at least a, having a ongoing uh, relationship with the US uh, would have been beneficial. But instead, uh, they embarked on a policy of destabilization. Why? It's just, it's, it's, it's about China, of course. But one of the major uh, elements that we have to talk about when it comes to understanding U.S. policy in Ethiopia is that you have to also connect uh, that policy to U.S. policies in the entire Horn of Africa and into Central uh, Africa. That you can't understand Ethiopia without understanding what's happening with Sudan uh, and Somalia uh, and the uh, targeting of, of Eritrea. So these are complex uh, and interrelated issues, but all of them go to one thing, uh, that the U.S. wants to maintain its control of that region, and they will uh, align themselves with power other, other forces, other states like Egypt, uh, to undermine the ability of Ethiopia to exercise its full sovereignty. What will be the next phase of the U.S. government's attempt in destabilizing and uh, making turmoil in Ethiopian politics? Well, it's, the first thing is to, is to understand how they use the, the um, concept of humanitarianism. Uh, humanitarianism has been used as a weapon. It first really emerged in the 1990s uh, as a justification uh, for U.S. intervention, supposedly uh, to protect uh, human rights. We saw that in the 90s with the, the attacks on Serbia. It has since then become a very important element in galvanizing uh, public support uh, for U.S. interventions uh, under the idea that 
uh, the U.S. is uniquely qualified and has the responsibility to protect uh, vulnerable people around the world. Uh, so that humanitarian intervention and the responsibility to protect um, is part of the, the ideological weapons, if you will, as part of this uh, hybrid war concept. Okay, that's the first thing. The, uh, the U.S. Is, is bent on undermining uh, the power of and the integrity of Ethiopian state. Uh, the next step, um, and understand this, the military element of the conflict uh, in Ethiopia uh, is going to continue until there is uh, sufficient pressure put on the Ethiopian state uh, to come up with some kind of uh, quote unquote uh, national reconciliation process. The main thing they wanna do is to create a political situation in which the uh, forces from the North, uh, TPLF, uh, will be reintroduced uh, into the governing structures uh, of, of Ethiopia. Uh, they think that that will uh, provide sufficient leverage uh, for them to undermine the peace process between Ethiopia and Eritrea and to um, slow up, if not to stop uh, the completion, uh, the complete opening of the, of the Renaissance Dam project. Understand this, the Renaissance uh, Dam project is uh, seen as a threat to a number of states, including of course, Egypt. Uh, so again, the destabilization taking place and will continue unfortunately uh, in Ethiopia is connected to these very important and complex economic and political uh, objectives. And so the people of Ethiopia need to be uh, prepared uh, that this struggle is unfortunately going to continue uh, because the US is intent on undermining the ability of, of the Ethiopian state uh, to uh, realize its potential. And that is a problem for Ethiopia, it's a problem for Africa, is a problem for, for peace. The sympathy that the US government has for TPLF is boundless. And really the US government is in melancholy of losing TPLF. The US government's affection, which is dedicated to TPLF is really amazing. What is their bond? The, the bond? <laughs> cold objective interest. U.S. policymakers, they care about nothing and no one. They are driven by objective interest. If the TPLF uh, is the instrument uh, to, uh, to be used to uh, balkanize the Ethiopian state, uh, then, the, then they become the friend of the U.S. Um, just like Ethiopia for quite some time was seen as the friend of the U.S. under the TPLF. So this is what drives the U.S. There's no sentimentality, uh, it's objective interest. And that is what needs to be understood, uh, that uh, forces, social forces in Ethiopia have a hard, hard question. And that is, uh, no matter what the internal uh, challenges or contradictions may be. The question becomes, is there, a committed to, is there a commitment to maintain the integrity of the Ethiopian nation? And if so, then what are people prepared to do to in fact do that? Because the US and European forces, they're quite clear. Uh, they will not stand by and allow for uh, an ascendant Africa. For, the, for them, the uh, continued uh, organization, uh, the continued dependency uh, of the African continent uh, is a, a requirement for them. Um, and so, you know, Ethiopia, Ethiopia is key uh, in, this, in this struggle, uh, not only for Ethiopian independence, but also for African independence. The US government is weakening the federal government of Ethiopia through um, economic and political pressures. Uh, we can mention the sanction and uh, aid cuts and other as well. 
Do you think this would resolve the ongoing conflict in Ethiopia? No, it's meant to basically put pressure on the Ethiopian state uh, to um, violate his own um, constitutional processes, his own uh, governmental processes, in order to arrive at some kind of new uh, national reconciliation process with the TPLF. That, uh, so no, these are pressures, uh, coercive pressures uh, put on the state in order to advance US interests. So no, it's only going to uh, intensify uh, the uh, uh, process of undermining uh, the sovereignty of the Ethiopian state. Uh, and that is its, its intent to drive the state into a place where it's forced to negotiate, uh, to concede, uh, and to uh, allow for uh, this, this force from the North to be a part of the governing process. As a political analyst, where do you expect the end of the U.S. intervention in Ethiopian matters these days? Uh, shall we expect the worst scenario out of this involvement or a blessing? Well, I think it, it's, it's unfortunate, unfortunate that uh, the military component of this will probably continue until it becomes clear, until the Ethiopian state is able to uh, uh, put a break on the uh, aspirations of the TPL, TPLF. Um, until the, so the, the situation on the ground will determine uh, U.S approaches to, to the situation. Um, unfortunately, it seems that um, the, the uh, commitment on the part of the US is to use coercion um, and to allow for its proxy forces uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, undermine the state, uh, to destroy uh, a valuable infrastructure uh, and to engage in activities that uh, uh, violate objectively the human rights of the people of, of Ethiopia. So we have that factor. The other factor is this, that can influence what is happening in Ethiopia. That is a more aggressive and clear position on the part of anti-war and anti-imperialist forces um, outside of Ethiopia, in the US, in Western Europe. And that is the role that we are uh, attempting to play with others to uh, to bring attention to the situation, to, uh, to expose what we see as the real objectives of the U.S. Uh, in that part of the world, uh, and to build a powerful movement in which we can then influence uh, policymakers in the U.S. Uh, to force the U.S. to take positions that are, are respective of the human rights of the people of Ethiopia, uh, the national sovereignty of the people of Ethiopia, um, and to put a break on the aggressive uh, militarized policies of the US, not only in the Horn of Africa, but throughout the African continent. The Black Alliance of Peace, we just uh, finished a month long campaign uh, on the US Africa Command or AFRICOM, uh, demanding that the US uh, withdraw its bases on the African continent uh, and its military relationships and to demilitarize the African continent. So we are attempting with others to address the situation politically, uh, centering what we call a people-centered concept of human rights that calls for uh, respect for self-determination um, and the collective rights of all people. So that's the other element that has to be developed. Uh, that's not just about uh, what happens on the ground in Ethiopia, as important as that is but also how we can begin to uh, move public opinion uh, in a direction uh, that would demand a peaceful resolution uh, of the conflict in Ethiopia. What would be the stance of the U.S. Security Council if the U.S. troop engaged in Ethiopian conflict? Unfortunately, what that means is that the U.S. would engage in another rogue state operation. 
interventions into um, into various nation, nations on the part of any state uh, is a violation of the United Nations Charter, a violation of international law. But we have seen that the U.S. has not allowed that to prevent them from illegal interventions, uh, from destabilization campaigns. Uh, so that is a possibility. We don't believe that um, the, uh, uh, of course, the U.S. Security Council will probably oppose because there you have the veto uh, process there. But this is where the role of the African Union comes back in. There can be no solution uh, to the situation in Ethiopia and certainly no introduction of foreign military forces in Ethiopia without uh, the role of the African Union being uh, considered. Uh, and so uh, any introduction of troops by the US uh, under uh, uh, NATO uh, or the participation of NATO must be and will be rejected. I can tell you now there is not much appetite uh, in the US public in support of any kind of significant quote unquote boots on the ground in Ethiopia. Um, but of course, they are constructing this uh, notion of humanitarianism uh, to, uh, to see if they can garner some public support or for a direct intervention of US troops. We don't believe that's going to happen. There may be the introduction of, of forces under the guise of, the, of NATO and maybe even the AU, uh, but we are opposed to that uh, in any form. We believe that what has to take place is a de-escalation uh, of the conflict uh, and to allow for uh, the people of that region to uh, work this out themselves. We are concerned about the military ability of the TPLF to engage in this prolonged military conflict. We raise the question, where are the arms coming from? And when you raise that question that you can begin to really uh, reveal the objective interests that are involved in under, attempting to undermine the sovereignty of, of the Ethiopian state. What will be the reaction of uh, the economic superpower counterparts if the US government involved in this situation from the side of Russia and China, as well as from North Korea and so on? Well, it really remains to be seen. Uh, the Chinese have, have expressed uh, concern with what is unfolding in, in Ethiopia. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the reasons, and we've said this uh, already, that the US is involved in attempting to undermine Ethiopia is because of the growing influence, right, as they see it, the presence, if you will, of, of China, not so much the presence, but the 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 relationships, economic relationships between the Ethiopian state and, and China. Uh, they will only be enhanced um, and, and, and the power of the state enhanced uh, with the full development of the uh, Renaissance Dam project. So um, the, the Chinese, of course, are opposed to these efforts to uh, undermine the Ethiopian state um, the Russians are not really a significant force in this equation yet. Uh, they have their own issues that they have to deal with um, and that we should deal with also in terms of what is happening on the African continent. Uh, but right now, uh, there's not much support uh, from either the Russians or the Chinese for any direct uh, UN intervention. And because of that, uh, then we think we can be quite uh, confident in asserting that there will be no uh, Security Council vote uh, to allow for a UN uh, intervention under the guise of peace to take place in Ethiopia. Ajamu Baraka, political analyst, thank you for your uh, words mentioning insights upon the ongoing situation in Ethiopia. Thank you. Have a good one. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh,